Hi students, welcome to the notes about acids and bases. We're gonna be talking about acid-base reactions and titrations. Here's the essential question. Please write this at the top of your science notebook or your page. How do acid-base titrations work? Now titrations is the ultimate thing we're gonna to get to. So we're gonna talk about a few things in order to just understand titrations, what they are and how they work. First, let's talk about acids and bases. Acids taste sour. In fact, scientists a long time ago used to taste things in order to tell whether they were acids or bases. Not too much of a safe practice nowadays, but you're probably familiar with tasting lemons and maybe even vinegar. Acids usually burn or sting. Think acid rain, or if you've got a tummy ache with your stomach acids. Acids conduct electricity. They react with bases to form water, and they're caused by high concentrations of hydronium, which we'll talk a little bit about later. So those last two bullets, we're gonna go more in detail. Bases taste bitter, think baking soda. Bases taste slippery, or sorry, they feel slippery, not taste slippery, they're bitter tasting, but think hand soap. Whenever you wash your hands, it's that slippery feeling is because of a base. Drain cleaner is, works off the same principle. Bases also conduct electricity, they react with acid to form water, and they're caused by high concentrations of hydroxide. Again, we're gonna talk about these last two bullets in the next few slides. You're probably familiar with a pH scale. A pH scale rates solutions based on their, basically how good or of a base or an acid that they are. And so this pH scale over here has a bunch of common items you might see and their pH. Now the lower the number, from 6.9 all the way down to negative numbers, those are acids. And the lower the number, the stronger the acid is. The higher the number, now notice that seven is our neutral point, but anything past seven, 7.1 all the way up to 14 are bases. The higher the number, the more basic it is. So seven is kind of our neutral point right in the middle. It's not really an acid, it's not really a base. They've kind of neutralized each other at that point. And pure water is neutral. Now, when we're talking about concentration, what are we talking about concentration of? Well, all depends on hydronium or hydroxide. These are both polyatomic ions you can find in your polyatomic ions list on your periodic table. But if there is a high concentration of hydronium, then that is more of an acid. And hydronium is just basically an extra hydrogen atom in water, while water's kind of attached to it. If there's lots of extra hydroxides in a solution, on the other hand, then the solution is a base. I wanna show you the simulation really quick just to kind of further show you what I'm talking about. So here's a simulation with hydronium, that's these red particles, and hydroxide, which are these blue particles. Now, right now, there's about equal amounts of each, so the pH of this solution is seven, or neutral. If I increase the amount of hydroxides, then the solution, the pH goes up, which means it's more of a base. So here's a really strong base. On the other hand, if I increase the hydronium, notice that the solution, the pH goes down and the solution starts reversing itself. And so with an increase in the amount of hydroxide, this becomes more of an acid. So how do we know whether something is an acid or a base nowadays? How do we know what the pH is? Well, it's a lot better to use a tool. There's lots of digital tools which will tell you a little bit more exactly what they are, but nowadays we use things like pH paper, like litmus paper or indicator solutions. These tell you the pH of a substance based on their color. Litmus paper, you would dip in a solution you would suspect being an acid or base. Now, depending on the color that paper turned, you can approximately tell what the pH is. Indicator solutions, this is phenothaline, an example of an indicator solution. It changes color depending on whether it's in the presence of an acid or a base. In fact, this is an important one. If it's clear, it's either neutral or acidic. If it's fuchsia, it's basic. And so we'll talk about that later when we talk about titrations. Here's a list of common acids and bases. In fact, if you look on the back side of your periodic table, there is a list of acids. So this list of acids here, I want you to point out something. Notice that all of them have a, a cation, that the cation is hydrogen. This is what makes it an acid. If these hydrogens break apart in water, that creates hydronium. So acids commonly have hydrogens in the beginning. Now bases, this list is not on your periodic table. You're welcome to write it if you want, but you'll know it's a base if the anion, or sorry, yes, the anion is hydroxide. So hydroxide here is in the end of each of these. Let's switch gears and we'll talk about acid-base neutralization reactions. This is kind of a review from double replacement reactions. And so if you remember double replacement reactions, acid-base neutralization reactions are basically a subset of that. It's a double replacement reaction where the acid and the base form salt and water. 
So here's an example of that. I'm not going to go in the detail of how to do a double replacement reaction here. If you need to review this, please go back and look at the module one where we talked about double replacement reactions. But here we have an acid. This is a phosphoric acid, and we have hydrogen and phosphate, and our base, which is sodium and hydroxide. These are going to go through a double replacement reaction. And so here it's going to create water which is hydrogen and hydroxide, and then this salt, which is sodium and phosphate, or sodium phosphate. Now, remember, salt is not table salt. It's anything that's a metal and a non-metal. Pretty much any ionic compound is a salt. So again, I'm not going to go talk about the, the logistics of all this. If you need to go review double replacement reactions, please do. We need to balance this reaction. And if you're struggling to balance this reaction, one hint I might say to do is to write water as HOH. That really helps balance the hydrogens and the hydroxides and the reactant side. It's just to help you there. But here's the coefficients for this reaction equation. The last thing I'm going to do is write down the solubility of each of the products. I'm going to write down those little subscripts to let us know what the phase state is is. Water is a liquid. It's the only liquid we have in chemistry, at least in this class. So anytime you see water, write L for liquid. Now, sodium phosphate is aqueous according to my solubility rules. All right, here's a student practice problem for you. I challenge you to pause the video right now and see if you can figure out how to solve this problem. Did you pause this video? I hope you did, and I hope you tried it yourself, but here's the answer for this solution. Again, I'm not going over the detail of this. You can always go back and remember to learn about double replacement reactions, or you can go look up some extra YouTube videos or look at some of the resources in the resource folder. All right, let's get to the ultimate point of our slides, and that's a titration. What is a titration? A titration is a method to figure out an unknown concentration of either an acid or a base. Like that's the ultimate goal of a titration. It's just a tool scientists use to be able to figure out, let's say we go to the stock room and we find that there's an acid there and we don't know its concentration. Is it a strong acid? Is it really dangerous? Is it a weak acid? Well, we could figure that out doing a titration. Now, in order to do that, we would need to use a, another solution where we do know the molarity or the concentration. We would need a pH indicator such as phenothaline, and we would need to know what the equivalence ratio of our, basically our neutralization reaction is. So we're kind of combining everything we learned together to be able to do a titration. So here's how a titration works. Here we would take our, a flask and we would put our solution that we did not know the molarity of. So let's say that acid, we would put that in here. We would also put a pH indicator in here. So let's put phenothaline in there. Remember, phenothaline does not change color in an acid. Then we would take a solution that we did know the molarity of, an opposite solution, such as a base. This is known as our stock solution. And we would put in this apparatus called a burette. And a burette is just a really long tube with numbers on it with a little tiny opening valve that you can open and close and drop the solution drip by drip. And so what we would do is we would take our base and we would drip it slowly in the acid, recording how much we would put in there. What we're trying to figure out is this thing called the ending point. Notice eventually our phenothaline would change a really faint pink. This is the point where basically we've, we've neutralized the reaction and we've created that equivalence point. Now this is very hard to do. In fact, a lot of times, even if you add one extra drop, it would go overboard, but hopefully that doesn't happen. We're going to assume that it doesn't, uh, but maybe if you did the... Um, the lab, you're going to be able to do this. And sometimes you might overshoot it and have to start all over again. Now, what's the ending point? This is ultimately what we're trying to get to. The ending point is the point at which the acid base reaction equation reaches the molar equivalence ratio. Now, what do we mean by that? Take a look at our student practice problem. This is the neutralization reaction where the acid and the base neutralizes and forms water. Well, the equivalence ratio is said by these coefficients. This is a one to two ratio. What that means is, is the sulfuric acid and the sodium hydroxide will reach equivalence when they are in the one acid to two base mole ratio. In other words, you would need half the acid to neutralize that base, or you would need double the amount of base to neutralize the acid. That's the equivalence ratio. So we're going to do that in a titration calculation. This is what we're doing. I mean, if you think about it, this is just a dilution. So we're going to use the dilution equation that we learned in our previous module to be able to calculate a titration. We would also need to figure out what the equivalence ratio is, and we'll add that in there. So let me show you how to use this equation. Here's a teacher example. 
It says here to determine the unknown concentration of sulfuric acid if 25 milliliters of a 3 molar sodium hydroxide stock solution were needed to bring 10 milliliters of the acid to their equivalence point. So basically we have an acid and we don't know its concentration. So we're going to use that equation. Now the first thing I'm going to do is write down the neutralization reaction. And so this is what we did before. And I need to know this because I need to know the equivalence ratio. According to this, according to the, my um, neutralization reaction, I would need half the acid in order to neutralize that base. So we're going to use that information in a minute. The next thing I'm going to do is figure out what information I have. I have my stock solution sodium hydroxide, which I know the molarity and I know how much I needed. And then I have my, my sulfuric acid solution, which I don't know the concentration of. And so we're going to plug that in a dilution formula. And so notice here, I'm going to plug 25 milliliters of my three molar sodium hydroxide solution. I don't know the molarity of my sulfuric acid, but I do know how much I needed in order to titrate it. So if I solve for this, I'm going to get 7.5 molar. However, remember, my equivalence ratio is half the acid to the base. So I'm going to take this acid, this molarity, and I'm going to times it by a half to get my ultimate molarity. So using a titration, I'm able to figure out my final answer. My, the molarity of this unknown sulfuric acid is now known. It's 3.75 molar. All right, here's a practice problem I want you guys to try yourself. Pause this video right now and see if you can figure it out. It says, determine the unknown concentration of hydrochloric acid if 25 milliliters of a one molar sodium hydroxide stock solution were needed to bring 20 milliliters of the acid to the equivalence point. So again, we don't know the concentration of our acid. Pause the video now to see if you can figure this out your own. Did you pause the video? Do you need a hint? Well, here's a hint. You need to know the reaction equation. You need to write the double replacement acid-base neutralization reaction in order to know that the equivalence ratio is one to one. All right, let's see if we can solve this together. We're gonna use this dilution equation and take our unknown and be able to figure out what, uh, sorry, take our known and be able to figure out what the unknown is. So plugging in our sodium hydroxide, it's 25 milliliters of a one molar sodium hydroxide solution. That's our known solution, our stock solution. We need to figure out M2, the molarity of our unknown. M2 should be 1.25 if you solve for it. Now remember, this is a one to one equivalence ratio. So I'm gonna take 1.25 and times it by one. And so it's not gonna change. That's my ultimate molarity. That's the molarity of my unknown. All right, that leads us to the end of the notes. Take a moment to review and highlight any of the key terms on your page. If you have any questions, go ahead and ponder those questions. Go back to the, the, um, the back to Schoology, go back to the forum and the discussion post and ask those questions. Or better yet, go and answer some of the questions people have or go and answer a question maybe you had before. Also summarize this page. Answer that essential question with detail. Maybe even provide your own practice problem using your own numbers. All right, good luck everybody.